Hi, my name is Martin Blunden and this is the third in our series of fire engineering tech talks on the problem of fighting fires in basements and other enclosed spaces. The talks are the production of a collaborative effort between the Scottish branch of the Institution of Fire Engineers, the University of Edinburgh and the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. We saw in Tech Talk 1 that a backdraft may well occur if an underventilated compartment on fire is ventilated from a single point. However, we also know that firefighters are often required to enter such a compartment and, when they do, they typically use the application of water spray directly into the hot upper layer of gases in the compartment to try and extinguish the flames and reduce the likelihood of rapid fire development or backdraft. Having looked at the science that underpins entering a compartment on fire in Tech Talk 2A, we now want to look at the practicalities of doing so in this talk, Tech Talk 2B. Practical Applications When firefighting, it is critically important to remember that there are no set instructions which can be followed on every occasion, as every fire incident is likely to be different. Therefore, firefighters involved in a compartment fire must keep a constant check on the environment surrounding them, both to ensure their safety and to make sure that correct firefighting techniques are used. It is also important to follow the National Operational Guidance, which applies in the firefighter's home jurisdiction. In the United Kingdom, this is the NOG, or National Operational Guidance. In practice, compartment fires are extinguished following certain procedures, using various water application techniques, depending on the circumstances faced at the time. Therefore, effective firefighting will require the use of appropriate door opening procedures, compartment entry procedures and water application techniques. The application of water. The first thing to consider, even before entry is made into a compartment, is water application. In dealing with compartment fires, the application of water can be grouped under three main headings. Firstly, indirect where water is directed from outside the compartment into the flammable gases in the hot upper layer and onto the compartment boundaries. Secondly, direct, where water is applied directly to the seat of the fire. And thirdly, gas cooling, which is used to control environmental conditions within a compartment fire to reduce the likelihood of flashover or backdraft. In this tech talk, we are primarily considering the gas cooling technique. This is an ongoing dynamic process and will provide a safe approach route to and from a fire in a compartment. This can be followed by a direct attack on a fire or safe egress if required. There are two different techniques used when gas cooling. One, short pulse. Two, long pulse, generally followed by a direct attack on the fire. The purpose of the short pulse is to provide a safe zone by cooling the gases in the immediate vicinity of the firefighting team. It can also be used as a gas temperature check by aiming it into the hot upper layer directly above the firefighters and observing the effects. If water is seen or heard falling back to the ground, that may indicate that the immediate area above the team is cool enough to advance further into the compartment. Care needs to be taken, as the water spray hitting the smoke layer can produce a wave of hot gases which travel through the room. When using this technique, the branch is set to a medium to wide spray, determined by the height of the ceiling. The higher the ceiling, the narrower the spray setting should be, in order to give the water spray the necessary momentum to reach ceiling level. This technique, when applied correctly, should both cool and dilute the flammable gases. The purpose of the long pulse is to extinguish the flaming combustion in the upper gas layer by cooling and diluting. This should allow firefighters to advance through the compartment. The branch in this technique is set to medium spray and aimed directly into the ignited upper layer of gases ahead of the firefighters. The width of the spray and how long the pulse lasts should be adjusted depending on the penetration required to reach the rear of the compartment. If the pulse is too quick, the spray will evaporate before it can travel all the way through the compartment. 
Therefore, the size and height of the compartment dictate the water spray cone's size. In larger or taller compartments, narrower spray cones are required, and in smaller or lower compartments, wider spray cones are necessary. The size of the room also dictates how many spray pulses are required. Many smaller compartments can be handled with three pulses, moving side, side and middle, in an anti-whirl motion. However, in large compartments, more pulses may be required. Conversely, if the firefighting crew is making their way up a corridor, only one pulse may suffice. Once again, this technique should cool and dilute the flammable gases, and sound firefighter judgment will be necessary to ensure safety. Direct attack is not a gas cooling technique. It is a controlled application of water directly onto the fire with the purpose of suppressing pyrolysis and extinguishing the fire. The branch is open to allow the amount of water needed to penetrate and suppress the fire and the spray is aimed directly onto the burning material. Safe Entry Procedures before firefighters can fight a fire in a compartment, a safe entry must be obtained and this is done by carefully following the appropriate door opening and compartment entry procedures. Door opening. The safe way to open a door into a compartment is to take the following eight steps. Step 1. Approach the door and assess it using the three H's. Heat to identify potential conditions in the compartment beyond the door. This can be assessed through touch or with a thermal imaging camera. Handle to identify the opening mechanism and hinges to identify the direction of opening either towards or away from firefighters. Step 2. Make an assessment of the conditions outside the door looking for any signs of extreme fire development including flashover and the potential for a backdraft as described in Tech Talk 1. Step 3. Where appropriate, carry out a wet test on the door, commonly called paint and seal. This may include an initial safety pulse, a short mist water application towards the door and the ceiling directly above the firefighters to cool down and dilute any fire gases, which may have escaped the fire compartment and collected in the ceiling area immediately outside the compartment above the firefighters. This should ensure that these gases will not ignite when the door is opened. Step 4. Firefighters should be positioned to maintain control of the door so that the safety of any entering crew is maintained throughout the door opening and compartment entry procedure. The door to the fire compartment provides protection for the team making a potential entry. Therefore, it should be kept intact or with minimum damage if forced entry is required. Closing the door offers the team maximum protection prior to entry or on withdrawal. Step 5. Partially open the door, just enough to allow the firefighting branch operator to make a visual assessment of conditions inside the compartment, the rough size and layout of the compartment, and identify the location of any casualties or hazards. Step 6. Before closing the door, spray a short pulse of water directly towards the ceiling inside the compartment and observe the conditions so that the reaction of water application can be observed and the next action can be assessed. Step 7. If conditions are deemed unsafe for entry, for example, if there are signs of flashover or backdraft, then step 6 can be repeated as many times as necessary until the conditions are deemed suitable for entry. If conditions do not improve, alternative tactics should be considered. Step 8. If it has been confirmed that no casualties are involved, depending upon the position of the fire inside the compartment, consider extinguishing the fire by direct or indirect water application from outside the compartment. If indirect water application is to be used, long pulses from outside the compartment should be applied into the flammable gases in the hot upper layer and onto the compartment boundaries. Immediately close the door to allow the resulting steam to cool and dilute the upper gas layer, avoiding any potential backdraft and suppressing the fire. Compartment Entry Having opened the door and if it is necessary to enter the compartment, these three steps should be followed. Step 1. When it is deemed safe to do so, 
then entry is made. Step 2. Once inside the compartment, and as soon as possible, the team should move away from the door and close it as much as possible to restrict the flow of fresh air into the compartment and avoid further fire growth, flashover or backdraft. Step 3. Apply water. This should be a dynamic and flexible process, which comprises an appropriate combination of the gas cooling technique using short and long pulses to ensure progress into the compartment can be made, and then attacking and extinguishing the fire by direct application onto the seat of the fire. In conclusion, we hope that this tech talk has been useful in explaining some of the techniques involved in compartment firefighting. It must be remembered that effective training and experience are needed to build the firefighting skills necessary to carry out these procedures safely and effectively. Having looked at fighting fires in basements, together with the difficulties and dangers of ventilating such fires in our first fire tech talk, and having looked at the effectiveness of the gas cooling technique in larger compartment fires, together with the practicalities for firefighters in fire tech talks 2A and B, we intend to consider the cutting, extinguishing, high pressure approach to underventilated fires in our next talk, Fire Tech Talk 3. In the meantime, we hope you have found this tech talk both helpful and informative.